Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the California Angels versus the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Angels today is Andy Messersmith, whose record is 6-5 with a 2.78 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is Mudcat Grant whose record is 3-9 with a 6.25 ERA. That's a tough name for me, Messer Smith. For someone who has a lisp, Messer Smith. That's, that's, that's the worst possible name that I could have to try to pronounce. Um, okay, look, we're, uh, we're in game three of the three-game series versus the Angels. Uh, we fell short yesterday, losing 4-3. to three. A good game by Rich Rollins. Uh, he had three doubles in the ballgame. I cannot remember the last time we had a player get three doubles in a ballgame. So uh, kudos to him. He was the player of the game. And, you know, it's weird. It, after the game was over, and I got some comments, some feedback from, from uh, you all out there, I realized that I cannot also remember a game uh, where there was a comeback. Like, it seems like whoever scores first wins, and that's why I get so frustrated uh, early in the ballgame when the uh, opponent gets one or two runs on the board. Uh, in the first, I mean, the game is pretty much over. We always say that. Uh, I always say that. And it's true. Like, it, there, it, that's weird, right? I mean, that there's no coming from behind in any of these ball games. I wonder why. I don't know why. I'm, it's just an observation. But um, keep that in mind going forward. We'll see if we have any come from behind victories. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. Um, I did receive my uh, 1986 Tops Rack Pack. So we're going to be doing a video uh, maybe later today. Uh, it, it's for Time Travel Tuesday. I know it's not Tuesday, um, but, I mean, it's only Tuesday one day a week. Everyone's going to watch it whenever they watch it. So, um, that will be coming up later today. We've got Mudcat Grant on the mound. Get your Mudcats out, but keep them close because you're probably going to be putting them right back in. Uh, he has been pitching terrible lately. All of the bullpen is available. John Gilnar... Four strikeouts in three and a third innings since we brought him up. This might be the guy that we move into uh, Mudcat's spot. I have decided that I'm definitely going to trade Steve Barber um, because he does have a high rating, so there's going to be some value for him. But he offers us nothing. And if we can get um, some dirty old cleats and a bag of balls, then we'll take it. Okay, then we have... Uh, our lineup versus uh, Andy Messersmith, who is a right-hander. Our first right-hander in over a week. And so we have uh, Van Kelly back in there, uh, first time in a while. We shuffled some people around, and I think, um, I think we're pretty solid defensively today as well. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the California Angels. Batting leadoff, playing center field is Tom Silverio batting second and catching is Randy Brown batting third at first base is Bob Chance batting cleanup in left field is Rick Reichert batting fifth in right field is Jay Johnstone batting sixth at second base is Bobby Knoop batting seventh at third base is Johnny Warhaus batting eighth at shortstop is Ruben Amaro and the pitcher, Andy Messer-Smith, in the nice spot. Okay, let's take a look at Mudcat Grant making his 13th start, 3-9 with that 625 ERA. 31K, 59 innings pitch. Opponents are batting 3-11 against him. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. He's got four pitches. Um, the fastball being his best pitch. Rated a 77 overall, the 33-year-old righty. Goes to free agent at the end of the year. He'll be looking for a new job. Um, take a look at his log. If you look at a Mudcat's log too long, you're going to be very disappointed. 
because he's lost three in a row. Uh, he couldn't get out of the um, fifth inning against Washington. He only gave up a run, but he walked six. And then versus Detroit, he went three and two-third, giving up six, and four, giving up five. So he has not been good at all, and he has not faced California yet this year. All righty then. Let's take a look at the defense. Pretty solid today. We just have McNerty back behind the plate. Uh, Renew was in there yesterday. And, oh, look at that. Harper up to 66 defensively uh, from 65. So trending in the right direction. Okay, here's Tom Silverio leading off Betty 270 with two home runs. And a base hit. Maybe two, maybe three. It is three. Oh, thanks to an error by Tommy Harper. What's Tommy Harper doing over there? We give him a, an uptick, and he causes an error. Silverio's on third, and you already know what the result of this game is going to be. Um, uh, we're going to play straight away. That run's going to score no matter what. There's a ground ball base hit. Pass to third baseman, one nothing. That is an earned run, though as um, it'll, that uh, error allowed him to stretch it to a triple. Didn't allow him to get on base because of it. So one nothing, just like that. Bob, chance, hits a two-run home run. Three nothing. Where's the alcohol? Rick Reichert, fly ball into center field. One down. That's going to bring up Jay Johnstone. 249 hitter. Striking out. So the game, it's like the game gives them the three runs. Whatever the runs that they're going to need to win. It gives it to them right away. And now all of a sudden Mudcat Grant's just mowing everybody down. Oh, I'm wrong. Bobby Knoop gets a base hit. I've been calling him Noop even though Don T reminded me in the last series against the Angels that it is Canoop in this case. I'm so sorry that I got it wrong. And Johnny Warhaus dumps it into center field. It will be caught. Three runs on four hits, an error. And we're down three runs. Let's take a look at our lineup rundown for today's ballgame. Got some work to do. Batting leadoff in center field is Tommy A.G. Batting second in left field is Mike Hegan. Batting third at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting cleanup up in right field is Tommy Harper. Batting fifth in catching is Jerry McNerty. Batting sixth at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting seventh at second base is Van Kelly. Batting eighth at shortstop is Don Kessinger. And Mudcat is in the nice spot, but he's not batting today. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's take a look at Eddie Messer Smith. We've already talked about him um, before in the previous series. So uh, we'll get right to the numbers. Making a 17 start, 6 and 5, a 278 ERA, 99 Ks, and a 120 innings pitched. Opponents are batting 187 against him. Three complete games and a shutout. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour, but. His curveball is his best pitch, followed by a great changeup and a fastball that's just below league average. A 92 rating. The 23-year-old righty goes to arbitration at the end of next year. Looking at his log, how did he do against us? There it is. Couple of games shut out. His only shut out was against us. Nine innings, giving up three hits, five walks, and seven strikeouts. That does not bode well. We've got Tommy Ag leading off. There's a their terrible defense on the corners. Maybe we could take advantage of that. Ag two two count. Strike it out. Hegan. Oh, the old strikeout walk combo. That never gets old. Hegan on first. We know we're hitting and running. Just a great day yesterday for Rollins. Four for five. Gets his average up to 270 almost. Good job by him. Here we go. 
Ground ball to third. Hegan will advance as Rollins gunned down at first. A chance here for Harper to atone for his error. I mean, we've, we do this occasionally because he is our worst defensive rated player. He's only given up three errors. Well, okay. Three errors in the outfield. It's, that's inexcusable, really. Um, in, you know, in theory, you shouldn't be making three errors. Um, in actuality, I mean, he's actually better in left field now, too. So some things have changed here. But he's got a negative range and a negative war. And he's made three errors in the outfield. That's not good. Okay, here we go. Let's see if he can atone for that error. 1-0 -oh count. And a base hit to center. He will score from second. And do we want to go for two? No, we do not. By the way, I think... Looking at... Uh, yes, Harper now has the team lead in RBI. Just saying. Okay, so Harper on first. 3-1. to one. We're doing better than we did against uh, Messer Smith last time. McNerty had the day off. And he comes back with a base hit to center. Harper will go to third. First and third, two down. Darren Johnson up. One big hit here can make this a ball game. Two down, first and third, one two count, and he strikes out, of course. Unbelievable. So frustrating. I need some coffee. Introducing my uh, bartender, Jennifer. All right, here we go. We're going to send Mudcat back out for some reason. It's the number eight hitter, Ruben Amaro. 218, no home runs. A comebacker to Grant. And an error. Jeez. Like, I'm, like, I'm ready to, like, pack it in already with Mudcat. Um, I guess there's just some pitchers that you just aren't going to get anything from. Mudcat and Steve Barber um, are two of those guys. We're going to bring the corners in. I'm assuming Messerschmitt will lay down a bunt. Good bunt to first. Amaro does move over to second. So a good job by Andy Messerschmitt. Runner in scoring position for Tommy Silverio. 2-2 Two -two count. Striking him out. That was low and outside as uh, he pulled the string on that slider. Two down. Can we get out of this jam? Here is Randy Brown. Somebody so remote we couldn't even find a photograph of him. But he is their everyday starting catcher. 1-0 count to Brown. And a ground ball to Kessinger. There we go. Out number three. So... Grant survives the second. That will earn him one more opportunity and probably a chance to bat here. Van Kelly leading off. First time we've seen him in a long time. Maybe other than in a pitch hit situation. Kelly walks. There we go. That's good. Um, let's see here. Now Kessinger is average up to 175. I mean, we should lay down a bunt and then bunt again. And then let AG try to drive in a run. But we know that, that won't work. It would never let us bunt twice. Kessinger at least gets it in the air. So it won't be a double play. Shallow right center field. They're going to pull the infield in. Makes sense because we are going to lay down a bunt. Grant has not had a hit this year. Ground ball to third. Warehouse not good defensively, but he, of course he makes the play at second. Yeah, there's, there's no, like we've seen all the signs. There's no way we're going to win this ball game. Um, I mean, when things like that happen, like it works for them, but it doesn't work for us. That's it. Well, okay, so we're going to let Mudcat have one more inning here, and then we'll just take him out. Maybe we'll have better. Uh, opportunity with a different pitcher in there. Mudcat strikes out Chance, who hit his 11th home run in the first inning. That gave him the 3-0 lead at the time. And then Reichert walks, and then maybe a strikeout. Yep. 
Now it's a pop up. Two down for Bobby Canoop. And he strikes out. So, All right. Bottom of the third, Mike Hegan walks for the second time. I love having Hegan in the lineup. He does, I mean, he's got a 344 on base percentage. I believe that leads the team for qualified batters. You can't really count Gary Sutherland because we are part-timing him, but um, great job by him. He strikes out a lot, but he also walks a lot. He's one guy in our lineup that I don't think I would trade because of his good defensive skills and the fact that at least he gets on base. We're hitting and running. Oh no. Oh no. There's no way we're going to win this ball game. Strike him out, throw him out with a hit, the hit and run on. And our best hit and run guy. All right, we're just playing the string out now. McNerdy getting on the board with a hit. Good job by him. And a base hit from Darren Johnson. Harper scores. It's three to two. Talk some shit. And then, like, we get three straight singles. This game makes no sense. But then neither does baseball. And then the strikeout. So it's three to two. Bottom of the lineup. We'll let Mudcat uh, pitch because he's, he's up second next inning. If we took him out now, we'd have to decide whether or not we want him to bat next inning. Uh, this way we know he doesn't have to bat. Johnny Warhouse leading off. A 200 hitter now. Three home runs. One down as he pops out. Ruben Amaro walks. Hey, here's Andy Messerschmidt. I mean... Pull the corners in, but who knows? He lays it down in front of the plate. An error. Oh, no, the sacrifice works. Big surprise, big surprise. Okay. Um, Silverio, ground ball to second. Can we get out of it? We do. We're going to the bottom of the fourth inning with Don Kessinger leading off. Kessinger for one today. Oh, is that a hit? No, he hit it too hard. And we're taking Grant out. And we're going to pinch hit. Um, I don't want to pinch hit Bosch here. We might want to save him for later. Um, let's see here. Let's bring in Wayne Comer. He's a good pinch hitter. 282 hitter versus righties. Started the year out in our on our opening day team uh, in the lineup. As he flies out to left, now he's we've reconfigured. We kind of know a little bit more about our our players, and he's like a fourth or fifth outfielder now. But for a minute, he was one of the top guys, and then Ag grounds out, so that's it. All right, uh, now we're gonna use my defense. Now, I know we got two lefties coming up. I mean, we could bring in Ron Locke here. We can't bring in Barber. He cannot get lefties out. I would love to get two or three innings from Barber, but he can't. He doesn't give us anything. Um, do we bring in Gelnar because he's been so successful? Or should we just bring in a lefty for one inning here? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring in Ron Locke. He's been really good for us. Maybe our best trade. Uh, he was a throw-in guy, and he's been really good. Look at the numbers. Use your eyes. 27-year-old lefty. Goes to arbitration next year. Here we go. Wow, Randy Brown. <laughs> That's very limited duty, but he's got 571 batting average versus lefties. Let's bring that down a bit. Ground ball to second. Van Kelly throwing him out. Here is Bob Chance. He's 0 for 2. 2 Ks. 
against Ron Locke. And a base hit. Fifth hit for the Angels. Runner on first. I know he's not going to be stealing here. Rick Reichert at the plate. This is dangerous. Reichert has really good power. Only betting 194, though. Wow, he gets good wood on it. Deep to right center field. Two down. Now, will they walk? Will the game walk Jay Johnstone since he's a lefty? Nope. Sky is it on the infield. Locke should get out of this. Onto the outfield grass. It's short. Kessinger making the catch. We go to the bottom of the fifth. We're only a run down, um, but that is like cavernous in this game. Ground ball from Hegan. Rich Rollins. Base hit for Rawl. Maybe we should just stop hitting and running with him. He just seems to do better when we let him take a cut. Runner on first. Here's Tommy Harper. Betting 256, five home runs, and he strikes out for the bajillionth time, I was going to say. But that's not a word. That's why I couldn't say it. I didn't know it. I just made it up. Uh, runner on first. Here's uh, Jerry McNerdy. Oh, McNerdy! Base hit. Oh, come on. With two outs, it went 93 feet. That means it's like right here. Somehow. All right. Um, Darren Johnson up. One for two today. Oh, ground ball to second. We go to the six. Good job by Locke. Popping and locking. We will bring in John Gelnar here. This will put Gelnar, if we pitch him a couple of innings, this will make it easy for us to move him into the Mudcat spot in the rotation. So that's the plan. Um, he doesn't have great endurance like a traditional starter, but, I mean, I don't care if he only goes four or five. Just give me four or five innings. Just get out of the damn first inning without giving up a run. Bobby Canoop flies out to center. One down. Johnny Warhaus up next, striking out on the pitch that was a foot and a half outside. Working the count, though. Nine pitches. Two outs for Ruben Amaro. And Amaro gets a hit. That'll bring up Messer Smith. Oh, wait, what happened? Ruby went for an extra base, and Harper threw him out. There's a little bit of revenge. Good job by Harper. I believe that's his second outfield assist. And that'll improve his uh, defensive war. So good job. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Van Kelly leading off. Striking out. Don Kessinger. So there's two down. There's no point in pinch hitting here. We'll let John Gelnar bat uh, so we can use him next inning even with the lefties coming up. Because we're not bringing in Steve Barber. He's on the trade block. That's fine. I don't even care. All right, here we go. Top of the seventh inning. Messer Smith was the next man up after uh, Amaro was thrown out. So one, two count to Messer Smith. And wow, nice curveball. Second K for Gelnar. I'm liking what he's offering. The one out. Back to the top of the lineup with Silvario. Silvario, not Vario. Two outs for Randy Brown. And a comebacker to Gelnar. And that's a 1 2 3 inning. I love that guy. Bottom of the seventh inning. Let's get it going here. We've got top of the lineup. 1 2 3 and up are up. Oh, come on. Eight Ks for Messer Smith. Here's Mike Hegan. Could that fall in? Get down. Nope, caught. 
Okay, so we, we've only had one or two hits, right? Since the third inning. Yeah. Yep. This is not good. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to send Gelnar back out there one more time. 2-2 count to Bob Chance. A line drive to somebody. To short. 54 feet. 54 feet would have meant that he would have caught it. That's 60 feet, 6 inches, right? So the shortstop would have had to have been right there. <laughs> That's so stupid. Why is this game so stupid? There's 145 feet into the hole. So that's, this is 90 feet. So 100, 145 feet is in the outfield. <laughs> oh my God. Well, we, we, we just have to ignore this number now because I, it's going to be in the back of my mind. I want to see it every time. And Jay Johnstone flies out to right. Here we go, bottom of the eighth inning. Most of the hope is lost. Oh, base hit from Harper. He's four for eight now against... Um, no, we're not falling for that shit. We're not going to go for two. Um, yeah, he's four for eight now against Messer Smith, which is pretty good. Okay, well, look, we have to let McNerty bat. Um, what? He's three for three in his career? Wow. Let's go. Ah, uh, poop. Oh. oh, double play. That's even worse. No, Harper's going to be safe at second. We didn't have the hit and run on, but we'll take it. So we have a runner in scoring position. A fast runner, in, in theory. Um, what is his ability to steal third? 73% chance to steal third? That's tasty. That's a tasty morsel. Let's, um, what is Brown's arm? Oh, God, he's got a rifle. Um, all right, well, let's try to give Darren Johnson a chance here. Oh, they're going to intentionally walk him. That makes sense. That's not an intentional walk, but they tried to set up the double play. Um, do we let Kelly bat? He's a lefty. He's 0 for 4 with two walks. Two strikeouts. A double play will end the ball game in a sense. But he is also kind of clutch. Like, we, he's definitely had a couple situations where he drove in a run. I think we got to let, I mean, what are we going to do? We gotta let him bat. He's only a 213 hitter. Let's so the question is what will we do with Kessinger? That's the question. So we gotta let him bat here. One, two. And a double play, so it didn't matter. Gilnar's coming out. We're going to bring in Skippy Lockwood. Skippy, we like this guy. I don't think his time is now. He certainly walks way too many. I mean, he's given up five base runners in three innings. That's not good. But get him out there, have him work it out a little bit. It's the bottom of the lineup. Starting with Bobby Canoop. Striking him out. Good job with that curveball. 69 miles an hour. Nice. One out. Oh, he gets him on the other curveball. There we go. Two down. Ruby, baby. Ruby tomorrow. Oh, you're not going to get him on that. Good job. Here we go. Ninth inning. Master Smith is tired. That, you would think that would be to our advantage. But it's not. Um, yeah, we can't let a 122 hitter bat. 
we need to win this ball game at home. Um, I mean, the odds are really stacked in our favor here. We're going to let uh, Gary Sutherland bat. He is a two, a 391 hitter. Um, and if he somehow gets on, then we're going to pitch it Bosch in the pitcher spot. That's what we've been waiting for. Gary Sutherland, uh, a player rated 69, batting 352. I don't know. Doesn't make any sense. Oh, two count. Oh, that might get down. Get down. No. Okay, here's Don Bosch. Bosch does not have any home runs. Versus righties. But he does have five home runs on the season. So maybe, just maybe, he runs into one here. Oh, well, there's a base hit to left. There we go. Good job by Bosch. Oh, look at these son of a bitches. They're making us decide. We have to be more aware that where we see the ball go is not necessarily where the ball does go. And I think that's where sometimes I get a little confused. So a 60% chance, very good speed, well below average arm, and we're down a run. We kind of have to take the chance. It's kind of, I mean, the ball game, I mean, we're not going to win. The game's going to not allow us to do this, but if we don't do it, then that's a bad, that's me being a bad manager. Oh, he's safe! Oh, there we go. Don Bosch gets a double, his sixth on the year. He has 11 extra base hits in a little over 100 plate appearances. So, um, I mean, we, He's the kind of guy we got to play almost every day. All right, here we go. Now we have uh, Tommy Agee up. Messer Smith reeling. He's 132 pitches in. That's not nearly the record, though. And then a walk to Agee. So we have the winning run on first. A very, very fast base runner. And Mike Hegan up. Hegan with his 363 on base percentage. Five walks now for Messer Smith. Here we go. 3-2 count to Hegan. Base hit into right field. Bosch around third. Oh! Oh, come on! Look at where that ball is supposed to be. I'm pointing at it with my finger instead of this. Look at where it's at. Did that look like where that ball went? No, it was like way out here. So we're not... Again, they're not going to let us win this ball game or tie it. Um, no, we can't based on that information. And Jay Johnstone's got a good arm. Oh, you sons of bitches. You sons of bitches. 145 pitches. They're not done with them yet. Uh, bases loaded. Double play written all over this one. We have to try for a sack fly. Um, in order to, like... To the best of our ability, stay out of the double play. Uh, but good speed on the base path. Here we go. Could we tie it up here with Rich Rawl? 2-0 count. No! He pops it up on the infield. Come on, man. Oh, they're going to bring in a pitcher. Ed Sukla. Sukla. Well, I mean, that, I mean... This is what happened yesterday, so we just pushed the button. It's Tommy Harper, full count. And he walks in a run! The game is tied! I had to, like... Oh, my, oh there's my... Yeah, there's a 1986 Topps baseball value pack. It just uh, said it arrived, but I've already got it. Um, all right, base is loaded. This is the ball game right here. We can win it. We can come from behind. Game is tied, and it's McNurtney. He can drive in a run. Taking a cut. Here we go. 1-0 count. McNurtney. Ground ball up the middle. Oh, we got free baseball. Shit. Okay, so now we have to... Um, 
we got to think about our defense here. We're going to move Hegan to first. Bosch will come in and play center field. We're going to move AG to left. Harper's going to stay in right. Oh, he's got three outfield assists. Look at that. Harper. Um, what's our problem then? Shortstop, third, second, first. Okay, we're good. And now we're going to bring in Mike Marshall. Our closer. We want him to shut it down here. We're running out of pitchers. Marshall into the ball game and a pinch hitter. It's Bubba, Bubba Morton. Take a look at Bubba betting 341 overall. Okay, here we go. Bubba Morton, 1 1 count, ground ball, base hit to short. Sutherland, we have Sutherland over there, and he goes right through his wickets. That's the problem with not having good defensive backup. Um. That's going to cost us the ball game right there. Tom Silverio. Oh, he's going to try to... He tried to lay down a butt. He had me fooled. I wasn't ready for that. Uh, I would not have thought of that. I would have thought more likely he would have steal. Now I think he will steal. But uh, Marshall strike, uh, struck him out with that screwball. Um, I guess we will pull third base in here. Um, not that he's going to... No, not third base. We'll pull in first base. Uh, with Hegan over there. Here we go. Runner on first. Is he going? Ground ball to second. Turn two. Yes! Going to the bottom of the 10th inning. We've got the oldest baseball player in the game. It is Hoyt Wilhelm, 46 years old. <laughs> Look at this guy. He looks like he'd be my grandfather right now. Uh, he's only he's 46. He's five years younger than me in this picture. And uh, clearly, I I haven't aged well. But uh, All right, so the, he's got two saves. He's got four blueies. We love that. Not great overall, but he throws that knuckler. That is his uh, reason to live. He's... Uh, 46 years old, he's living off that knuckleball. 77 overall uh, is his rating, not his age. Free agency at the end of the year. Oh, crap. Um, well, we got to take Mike Marshall out because we're going to try to win it right here. So we're going to bring in Danny Walton. Let's see here. 200 hitter, but he does get on base a lot versus righties. Betting 217 overall couple of dongs. Ground ball to first. One out. All right, here is Van Kelly. Grounding out to second. And Gary Sutherland. Wow, that knuckleball was dancing. That was a one, two, three inning. We're going to the 11th. How long can we go here? Diego Segui into the ball game. Uh, despite his um, sub-average rating, he's, had, he's been okay for us. 17 walks, 26 strikeouts, and 37 innings pitched. A couple of saves. 31-year-old already is a free agent in 1971. So he's going to be around for a little while. Okay. Bob Chance... Angels have not scored since the first inning. And a base hit for Chance. Runner on first. Got to guard the lines. He's not fast, but we got to prevent him from scoring on an extra base hit. 0-2 count to Reichardt, and Sagi strikes him out. One down. Here is Jay Johnstone. We got to do that again. Guard the lines. Johnstone. 
One full count. And a base hit. Chance off the hold. Oh, he goes to third. Was the hit and run on? There's no way he should be on third base. Well, now we're in real trouble. Infield in. One, two count to Canute. And he strikes out. Wow, we could get out of this here. It's going to take a miracle. Or will there be a wild pitch, pass ball, or balk? It's got to end like that somehow. Oh, one count to Warhaus. And he pops it up down the first baseline into foul territory. And the play is made by our second baseman, Kelly. We go to the bottom of the 11th inning. Don Bosch leading off. Bosch, A.G. Hegan. I like that. Oh, God. That's, that, uh, <laughs> that knuckleball is tough. Bosch strikes out. One out. And there's a gapper from A.G. All the way to the wall in theory. No, it is all the way to the wall. 267 feet. A triple for A.G. And we've got a chance to walk it off here. Third triple of the year. They're going to bring in Joe Pactwa. Um, and he's been bad. Wow, they want this game to end. 0-4 with an 84 ERA. <laughs> Oh, he's a two-way player. He's a two-way player. So if so, let me explain. I know you know what a two-way player is, but I'll tell you how he's a two-way player in my game, in the sim. Oh, my God. He's given up 22 home runs in three innings. I'm pointing again. 22 home runs in three innings pitched. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry I did this. Um, wow. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, so uh, if the if the the player was a pitcher, as Pacwa really was, but the game thinks of him as a hitter, I created him as a pitcher, hoping that he would develop in the minor leagues. But because the Angels are an expansion team uh, from you know 1962, uh, a player with his overall batting ratings being good must have allowed him to pitch. And this is the, how what happens. They bet 860 against them. I like our odds here. Um, but we also have to try to be serious and set up a sack fly. AG would score anywhere from a sack fly. Let's go. This could be the ball game. Oh, they walk him. And it's Rich Rawl. So we can hit and run here. That was an intentional walk. Uh, although I don't think... <laughs> Pactwa um, needed any help in that regard. So we're going to hit and run. This did not work last time, so we're due. Rich Rawl, first and third, one down. Hit and runs on, first pitch swinging. Ground ball, base hit. That's the ball game. We come back and win. Four to three. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy stakes. Thank you, Joe Pactwa. Oh, man. I feel like I set that up just for us to win. <laughs> Uh, we went four to three. Oh, it's simulating. This is going to take an hour and a half, probably. Um, yeah, I think we'll talk through this. I'm, I, I hate editing these long. It's just it's just hard, and the game's already been long today. But um, I think that we will be trading. Absolutely, Steve Barber is gone. I think Tommy Harper has to go. Um, he's an okay hitter for us. Especially on our team, he's above average. We're a 223, 2, 228 hitting team. Um, he's batting like 250. So we could really use his bat, but defensively, um, he's not helpful. And uh, we could find a way to use right field uh, to our advantage with a player that could hit 250 and also play better defense. So I think that's what we're going to have to do. So I think those are the two players that we're going to trade. Uh, before the uh, trading deadline, which is a, a month and a half away. Um, but we're going to try to use them as long as we can here. And uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep trying to find maybe a good trade uh, partners for those guys. But, I mean, who knows? Um, we just do the best we can with what we got. Uh, yeah, so we will have the 1986 Tops Rack Pack. 
Uh, we're going to open that up here after the ball game in a separate video, of course. Um, not a lot of rookie cards in that um, in that group for that year. The best rookie card, based on value, is the Cecil Fielder rookie card for the Blue Jays. Um, it was before Fielder went to Japan and came back and played for my Tigers and hit 50 home runs that first year, uh, where he was kind of a phenomenon. Uh, so that card is the number one rookie card in that set. The number two card is Lenny Dykstra, um, who um, his card is like, you know, it's not worth as much as you, you know, uh, it's not, uh, obviously it's not worth very much. So, uh, but the, the top card value wise in that set is the Nolan Ryan card uh, in a PSA 10 graded a perfect gem mint 10. That card goes for $1,300. So if we pull that card, if it looks r decent, then I think I'm going to send it in for grading and, um, and see if we can't get a $1,300 card out of that. Why not? Um, and there's lots of other, I mean, obviously Cal Ripken's in there. Um, you know, George Brett's in there. There's a lot of great Hall of Famers in that set. But because it's, they're so late in their career, the value is not much uh, individually. But graded, they could be, you know, in the hundreds at least. Um, not that I would do that, but you could. Nolan Ryan for sure. All right. So we did uh, get through that uh, without any trade offers. Let's take a look at the standings. We'll try to get through this quickly here. We're back to 500 before we head to Comiskey. Um, that's our next series. Um, okay, so National League, San Diego still sitting on 16. I have now completed all baseball cards for all teams with the exception of the uh, San Francisco Giants. I have done their pitchers, as you can see here, but I have not done their batters yet. I will do the, that tonight, and then we'll be 100% complete uh, with all the extras for this game. Uh, headline news, Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. We had a no-hitter the other day. Uh, Nyman holds Royals to two hits. Jerry Nyman, Ni uh, Niles Nyman's brother for the White Sox. Um, I don't think, yeah, he doesn't even have a card. I think he pitched in one game in real life. Yeah, uh, 1968. He made seven starts, and I think that was it. I don't think he ever played again. He threw a complete game in his first start of the year. So, all right. Um, Indians and Tigers finalize a four-player trade. Thanks to, four, to a four-person deal worked out between the Indians and the Tigers. Interdivision, that's always weird. Reliever Dick Tidro, Reliever Ed Farmer... And second baseman Dwayne Kuyper will go to Detroit. Ed Farmer did pitch for Detroit. In return, Cleveland gets Norm Cash. Oh, my God. That's crazy. He may need another spring to settle in. What? That's weird. Uh, his ceiling is excellent, and he has an excellent arm. Wait, are they talking about, are they talking about Norm Cash? Uh, the Indians have a team, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Wow, that's big. There's Kipe. Okay, let's take a look at transactions. We'll take a look at a little bit bigger look at it here. A lot going on. First of all, let's take a look at a couple of retirements. Steve Demeter uh, has retired. And there he is in a Tigers uniform. Then Jim Mahoney retired. Hadn't played since 1965. Two injuries. Oh, Camillo Pasquale is going to miss a month with a knee ligament. He's 35 years old. Best pitcher on the Senators. He's, he's whooped us already. And Dennis Menke of the Astros is going to miss 100 days. Um, he's a starting shortstop for the Astros. Okay, the, let's look, take a look, closer look at the trade. Norm Cash going to the Indians after a long career with Detroit. He's 35 years old. I believe he's second in the American League in home runs with 15. 
um, batting 274 with an 877 on base percentage. So the Indians go in for it, and they're giving up, I'm guessing, three minor leaguers here. Ed Farmer, um, who is in single A, and uh, he did pitch for the Tigers in real life, famous for hitting Al Cowens and starting that big brawl. Dick Tidrow, single A uh, pitcher, famous for his great mustache later in his career. And Dwayne Kuyper, announcer for these Giants. I don't know if he still does that or not, but he's an 18-year-old rook. He's injured as well, a broken ankle, but um, can't hit. I, it shows he had a home run in the minors, but I think he only had one career home run in like 15 years of playing baseball or something like that. Um, so there you go. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. This was a long one. I'm so sorry. Um, let's pull up the box score here. Player of the game. I mean, it's kind of unfair to give it to the game-winning RBI, right? Uh, Rich Rollins, um, he did have one hit, and that was um, – oh, yeah, two hits. And he knocked in the, the winning run, but, like, that was against <laughs> – uh, a backup pitcher. We're going to give it to Tommy Harper. Uh, Tommy Harper had three hits today. Drove in two runs. He now is the lead leaguer, uh, team leader in uh, RBI. Uh, Bosch had a double. AG had a triple. That was a fun game. We did come back and win, so that blows that theory out of the water. Diego Siggy gets the win. He's 3-1. and one. Good job by the bullpen. They did their gerb after the fourth inning. Mudcat Grant is out of a job. Andy Messersmith, he tried. 148 pitches. Um, Hoyt Wilhelm came in and threw some knuckleballs. Gets his fifth loss. Okay, we're going to come back tomorrow with game one against the Chicago White Sox. Until then, everyone, have a great day.